Back in the 19th century, many men had a handy little shaving box to keep all their shaving supplies in. Not only did it keep their supplies organized, it had a handy fold-out mirror so you could do your grooming anywhere. Today we're going to show you how you can build your own 19th century shaving box. We've included a link to the material list in the description down below so you can print out your own copy. Many of the dimensions are based off the size of our main box, so you're going to want to build that first. You can of course build your box bigger or smaller depending on your needs and preferences. A lot of options for doing the corners on your box. We decided to go with the traditional rabbit joints, but you could do dovetails, box joints, or miter joints. For the rabbit joints, we notched out the ends of each of our walls and double checked the width against our ends. Once we had it dialed in perfectly, then we could go ahead and do all four sides. A perfect fit. We got the box all glued up so we could start working on the dimensions and cutting out or additional pieces. While that was drying, I cut the 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch blanks for the mirror frame. Then I rabbited them a half inch deep to hold the mirror and a backing. Since we now knew what the inside dimension of our box was, we were able to cut the mirror frame to size. It's slightly smaller than the inside dimension of the box. Check the material list to determine what size you need to make yours. I want to add some highlights to the corners of my frame. So using a jig that I made many, many years ago, I cut a slot in each corner of the frame. I cut some contrasting maple wood to the same thickness as the slot was and cut some little triangles and glued them in. Once dry, I trimmed them down. After sanding, gives a nice little decorative look. We can now cut our base and our lid. We want to make sure when we do it that our grain direction goes side to side, not front to back. On our base, we're going to round over two sides and one end on the top. On our lid, we'll round over two sides and one end on the top and the bottom, making a bull nose. We can then sand them up. The front and sides will protrude a little bit from the box, while the back side that we didn't round over will be flush with the box. We're now going to take the lid and cut the front edge off one-third of the length of the lid. In my case, the lid was 12 inches long, so I cut it off at 4 inches. I added some double stick tape and folded the box where we had just cut it so we can carve mortises for the hinges and both halves will perfectly line up. I set my blade to the height of a hinge leaf, did a couple of test cuts to make sure it was perfect. I then marked where I wanted to cut it on the lid and did both sides to the width of the hinge. Take your time, you'll get a perfect fit. You can now mark where your hand screws are going to go 
and then drill out some pilot holes for the screws. Go ahead and install your screws, making that lid back into one piece with a foldable section. Positioned the box on the inside of the lid where it was going to go and marked all the sides. That gave me a location for where to put the frame for the mirror. I marked where the holes needed to go and made sure I did them to the outside so it wouldn't be going through the rabbit where the mirror goes. With the screws protruding slightly through, I pressed down to mark on the lid exactly where I needed to drill my, drill my pilot holes and then installed the frame. Now I marked out my hinge locations for the lid to go onto the box. And I installed the hinges. I positioned the box on the base and marked it as a reference. I applied my glue and glued the box to the base. Make sure you get your directions correct. While the box was drying, I cut the first inside divider to the width of the box, 3 eighths of an inch thick. I then notched them so I could put the lengthwise dividers in. I notched it one quarter of an inch wide. Now that the glue is dry for the box to the base, I glued in those dividers. I marked and drilled a small hole for the latch. Depending on what type of latch you're using, this step may vary. I disassembled all the hinged and screwed on components, sanded it all, and finished it. I used a lacquer finish on mine. I had a piece of mirror cut to size at the local glass shop and installed it. After everything was dry, I reinstalled all the hardware. For my latch, I put a screw where the hole in the lid was and attached my latch mechanism. After wiping off all the dust, we were done. We have videos coming up too on all the accessories to go inside the box. So if you want to see those too, hit subscribe and follow along.